It seems like I'm kind of right when you came when you came to this. On agreeing to aid Helpless Soul in his quest, a new messenger window opens and a less friendly character begins to talk. This appears to be the entity we had been communicating with previously, a being known as Lucifer. Hopeless Soul oh, warns us not to speak with Lucifer, but before he can say much more, our hapless hero is dragged back into a newly revised version of Pony Island, Lucifer taking control of the system and bending it to his will. It becomes clear that Hopeless Soul was the character opening up these portals that allowed us to progress and alter elements of this digital prison. With his further help, the protagonist is able to unlock mods such as Pony Lasers, which can be used to destroy Lucifer's demonic summonings. This entire game is a digital hell, a limbo for lost souls created by the devil himself. Yeah, the first the core is known as Azazel and is protected by four locks. Azazel challenges us to defeat him by going head to head in a series of code based puzzles. After besting him throughout these four challenges, we delete the core and weaken the prison. After core 1 has been deleted, Lucifer alters the landscape of the game world, changing it from a side scrolling action experience to a more RPG like adventure one. On this world map, many secrets abound, and these help us grasp the true story behind our protagonist. On the surface, it doesn't seem as though we learn a great deal about the central protagonist of Pony Island. We know his soul is tethered to the game, and that Lucifer wishes to drag it down to hell. We also learn that this unnamed character has been asleep within the Devil's Limbo for centuries, meaning he died hundreds of years ago. But if we dig a little deeper, we actually find out a fair amount about this mystery man. On the world map, we discover. So. Hmm. Hmm. That is, uh... This is kind of proving my thought process on this game. ...a location known as the Cave of Truths. Within this cave, a demon-like entity tells us we may ask four questions. The first question is, who was I? To which the answer is, your name was Theodore. You left behind a mother and daughter. Question two is, who killed me? And the answer given is, his name was Abu al-Kindi. He fought for his city. Question three is, where did I die? To which the answer is, at the foot of Jerusalem's wall, far from your home. Finally, uh, question four is, when did I die? To which the answer given is, Whoa, wait, wait, wait. 1,252? Oh, 1,252 years after Christ was born. Oh, wow. 1,252 years after Christ was born, in the waning summer sun. These answers become That's... even more interesting upon unlocking one of the many tickets hidden wow. throughout the game. We board a boat and Theodore's pony avatar changes to that of a knight. The knight's attire resembles that of a crusader, and this lines up with the information given to us previously. The Crusaders were Christian knights from Europe who journeyed to Jerusalem to take control of the city. During this holy war, many innocent lives were lost to the invading Crusaders, explaining why Theodore ended up at the Devil's mercy as penance for his sins. While fighting in this crusade, which took place in 1099, he died at Jerusalem's wall to the blade of a fighter defending their home. Theodore's story is also confirmed wow. to us via flashbacks, which reveal religious church imagery representing his Christianity, the city of Jerusalem where he took part in the war, and a vision of the knight who killed him.
That's and so something. we return to the game, where eventually Theodore reaches Satan's keep, and here the devil himself appears to challenge him. But before that is interesting. I'm surprised someone that old was probably reincarnated, reborn. I don't know. It seems like he was reborn, but I have to wonder. Why? Before the fight can anyway, properly kick off, Hopeless Soul manages to hack a portal leading to core number two, this time labelled Beezlebub. Unlike the puzzle-based yes. boss fight associated with yes. Azazel, Beezlebub prefers brute force, transforming into a monstrous demon and attacking head-on. After a lengthy battle, Beezlebub is vanquished. Lucifer returns to stop us from deleting Core File 2, but Hopeless Soul reveals that he isn't just a friendly ghost in the machine. He has harnessed the game code to such a degree that he can use the weapons contained within to hold Lucifer at bay. Using this window wisely, we delete Core File 2 and the game shuts down in a cloud of gas which renders our hero unconscious. Once awake and returning to the Pony Island arcade cabinet, we see the game has changed quite drastically, now featuring more vibrant, detailed visuals and a more family-friendly huh. feel. A new character known as Louis greets us with a tutorial and seems surprised when he realises we already know Pony Island's core features such as gliding. Louis is of course an interesting name, short for Lucifer, and it is Oh, not too long before the devil's sidekick is revealed to be just that. The friendly facade begins to crumble as we hack this new version of Pony Island and expose its familiar, sinister true form. We destroy Louis and escape back to the desktop where Theodore is able to make contact with Hopeless Soul once more. We are informed that there are thousands of other souls trapped in the malignant code under Lucifer's control. These souls resisted Lucifer and chose not to surrender to him, so rather than falling screaming into hell, they remain held captive within Pony Island. Hopeless Soul then explains about a vulnerability in the system that will allow us to reach Core 3. To access this weak point, we must dig through many of the scrapped Pony Island prototypes, versions of the game never finished by Lucifer. Eventually, one of these prototypes allows for a portal to be opened, leading to Asmodeus, the third and final core-based boss. Asmodeus tries to trick both Theodore and the player into failing his challenge, but if we resist, then he submits well, and allows the final core to I'm be destroyed. Uh, With all three cores deleted, different. the system is compromised, and uh, a file dump can commence. Characters. Hopeless Soul explains that this file dump will wipe everything, destroy- Yeah, it's really interesting that they're using Christianity characters. Hmm. Even Lucifer in the process, meaning upon initiation, Theodore and the other trapped souls must run to safety as the game literally deletes behind them. Hopeless summons the souls of those trapped and tormented, turning them into ponies so they may flee the game world. As the system dump initiates, Lucifer shows up in a desperate bid to stop us. Eventually, Lucifer is overwhelmed by the deletion of his code and torn apart by the very souls he once held captive. The system dump completes and Theodore's soul is freed. Theodore is sent back in time, returning to the gates of Jerusalem, his final resting place where he can find peace in the afterlife. While the game has ended for its lead character, for us, the player, one more request is asked. Hopeless Soul still remains trapped within uh, the Pony Island game that exists on our computer in the real world. So while the game within the game is cleansed, the actual game still requires deleting, and Hopeless Soul asks for us to do just this. To save his soul, we must delete Pony Island from our computer. But first, we need to dig a little deeper. All right.
This is all nice and good, but I feel like the ending is like something really, really twisted. If we choose not to delete Pony Island and grant Hopeless Soul his freedom, then it is possible to achieve a secret ending and with it, Boss Gauntlet. To achieve this ending, players must collect all 24 tickets hidden throughout the game. I have put together a detailed huh? guide covering the location of each of these collectibles, as well as a playthrough of the boss itself, so I'll leave a link to that video at the end of this one for those interested. Once all 24 tickets have been obtained, Hopeless Soul pauses the game and appears to us once more. Sounding a little disappointed that we spent our time searching for secrets rather than saving him from this digital hell, Hopeless Soul offers the player one final option to provide us with true completion in the form of an ultimate boss battle. And so, battle commences across three separate phases. Phase 1 takes on the form of the standard 2D Pony Island gameplay. Hopeless Soul floats around summoning skulls and souls to aid him and calling pools of blood to rise from the floor, which also deal out damage. However, we cannot actually die. Rather, any damage taken simply replenishes some of our opponent's health bar. Phase 2 is a riff on the Pony Galaxy minigame, playable on one of the desktops earlier in the story. We can now move up and down as well as left and right, while firing bullets at Hopeless Soul. In retaliation, he generates demon skulls, in addition to opening portals that deal massive damage. Hmm. Phase 3 turns up the heat as I Hopeless Soul transports us into a 3D this. playing field for one final I honestly don't trust this. This is all just sketchy right now. Battle. Upon overcoming this last hurdle, Hopeless Soul addresses us once more, but now he sounds a little deflated. We are told that there is nothing left and must force quit the game in order to shut it down. Hopeless Soul has nothing more to offer us, and only hopes we take pity on him and delete the game file. We can escape this limbo however, by running past Hopeless Soul and leaping out of bounds, we fall into a black void and eventually wake up beside the Pony Island arcade machine. You may also notice the knight's helmet appears beside us on the floor, symbolising his really escape from the game world. We've just about covered the story of Pony Island, but before I sign off today, there is one more thing that needs to be done. Hopeless Soul is still trapped within the game code and wishes for us to delete it from our hard drives in order to lay him to rest. One question still lingers, who exactly is this mysterious character? We can only go by the evidence on hand, which suggests Hopeless Soul was the only trapped soul who managed to trick and evade Lucifer. Upon doing so, he created a subdirectory within the game code where he could remain off the grid and out of reach from his devilish tormentor. From here, he was able to then contact other souls who showed potential and may be up to the task of defeating Lucifer and freeing those he imprisoned. Souls like the Knight Fyodor. Hopeless Soul has the ability to open portals hmm. at will that lead directly to the game code. He also has the ability to spawn in attacks used by I other see. game characters, such as the demon head seen here. All of this suggests that Hopeless Soul was once a hacker of some kind, and used his efficiency in this area to exist as a sort of ghost in the machine, controlling subsystems and manipulating things from the depths of Pony Island's rotten code. In truth, we may never know who this character really is, so what do you think? Let me know in the comments below, and remember to leave a like if you enjoyed this video, and of course subscribe for more horror related content. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video. Oh yes, that's right, it's time to lay Hopeless Soul to rest as promised. Goodbye, old friend. All right. Honestly, at the end, I was thinking that this was going to be a twist, and the good guy is actually the bad guy. Gladly he isn't. Thank you for that. Now.
Uh, overall, this game seems pretty demonic. That's just it. It just really is demonic sounding. And I wish we did know more about this mysterious character that was helping us, but uh, I think it's just we get what we can get. And just accept it as it is. As weird as that sounds. Anyway, other than that, it's pretty interesting that you have to hack and fight against uh, the guy down there and all that. Can't really say that's a good thing. I mean, come on. I'm not a big fan of demonic stuff. I gave my, I'm a part of Christianity. So yeah, that makes sense why I don't like the demonic stuff. Especially when it comes to the guy down there and stuff. Uh, anyway, uh, as I promised at the beginning of the video, I would say and explain what is going to be posted tomorrow on Friday. What's appearing on Friday is a gameplay of Deltarune. It was suggested, I'm going to post this on both channels, saying that I'm going to do some Deltarune stuff and all that. Put a link to it and all that. Uh, yeah. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Uh... Yeah, I'm not going to go into detail about the Delta and stuff, but... Eh, I hear it's shorter. I looked it up. I can only get Chapter 1 and 2 for free, so luckily enough, that works for me. Uh, thing is, i never seen anything related to Delta Rune. I know of the characters, but I don't know much of the storyline itself. I did see a uh, game theory about Gaster and how he's evolved, but that's it. So this will be pretty interesting to see how this works. Anyway, that's it. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to hit the like button down below. Also, be sure to hit subscribe to support the channel, to support all the content being provided, and so on and so forth. Also, be sure to leave a comment about what you want me to react to next, what you think about this whole thing I'm doing about Deltarune, what you think about this game, and so on and so forth. Also, be sure to hit the notification button to be notified immediately when the next when new video comes out, because tomorrow, Deltarune is coming out. I can't say if it's coming out in the morning or in the afternoon. But it is coming out. And if you don't want to miss that, be sure to hit the notification button. Other than that, I hope you all enjoy. And I will see you all next time. Bye.